Hello everyone, I'm Ash from PlayStation Access, and I am here to take you through just about everything you could possibly want to know about PlayStation 5. From the most exciting features to the tiniest details in one big breakdown of everything PS5. Whether you've treated yourself to a pre-order and want to make the most of your new console, or are in hot anticipation of a shiny white package under your Christmas tree, or just want to know more about what this big old technical beast can do, our ultimate guide to PS5 will scratch every questionable itch you could have about this marvellous machine. And if it doesn't, well, you should probably go and see a doctor. If you're looking for something specific, we've split the video into chapters, which you can see on the timeline and in the description. Ready? Oh, deep breath. Right then, let's start with the broader strokes before we go into the fine details. There are two PS5 consoles, the PS5 and PS5 Digital Edition. In terms of tech specs and performance, both PS5 models are identical. The only difference is PlayStation 5 features an Ultra HD Blu-ray disk drive, whereas the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition does not. Your preference will depend on if you use, or intend to use, physical disk-based media. Are you going to buy disk versions of new games that won't work with the digital edition? Do you have PS4 discs you'd like to play on a PS5 with a disk drive? And also if you're at all bothered about your console being perfectly symmetrical, of course. With both PS5 models, games and other media can be purchased digitally and downloaded through the PlayStation Store, or accessed through subscription services like PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. We'll take a closer look at the games themselves later on in the video. Now, let's talk dimensions. In the horizontal position, the PS5 console is approximately 390mm wide, 104mm tall, and 260mm in depth, excluding the base, and weighs in at about 4.5kg. The PS5 Digital Edition console is approximately 390mm wide, 92mm tall, and 260mm in depth, weighing in at around 3.9kg. Both can be used horizontally or vertically. Alongside those measurements, the DualSense wireless controller is 160mm wide, 66mm tall, and 106mm in depth. It weighs approximately 280 grams. At launch, both PS5 consoles and the DualSense wireless controller are available in a single colour, and decorated with this absolutely magical mini PlayStation shape pattern embossed into the white material, if you look closely. As for what's on the console itself, as lovingly pointed out in our unboxing video, there is a super speed Type-C USB port and a high speed USB Type-A port on the front, the latter of which is for charging your DualSense wireless controller, along with the power button and also the eject button, excluded from the PS5 Digital Edition since there will be no discs to eject. On the back, there's an Ethernet port, as well as a further two USB Type-A ports. Both editions of PS5 come boxed with one DualSense wireless controller along with its very own charging cable, a HDMI cable, AC power cord, attachable base, quick start guide and safety guide. Oh, and just to show how ultimate this ultimate guide really is, the HDMI, charging cable and power cord are all 150cm long. You know, just in case. Now onto the hardware. Inside your PlayStation 5 is a whole world of technological magic. To reel off the specifics, there's a custom 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU clocked at 3.5GHz, though it's capable of variable frequency. To put that in basic terms so I understand what I'm actually saying here, computer brain is smart. The GPU, or Graphical Processor Unit, is a custom RDNA 2-based graphics engine, supporting hardware-accelerated ray tracing and capable of 10.3 teraflops, meaning PS5 is capable of handling the next generation of high-end gaming experiences. PS5 can handle games running at high resolutions whilst maintaining consistently smooth frame rates. For comparison, the original PS4 was capable of 1.84 teraflops, and PS4 Pro 4.2, so this is a significant boost in raw graphical processing power. Just to be clear, you don't need a 4K TV for PS5, as it supports 720p, 1080i, 1080p, and 2160p resolutions. The GPU supports ray tracing, an incredibly exciting, cutting-edge technology that simulates how light actually interacts with objects in the real world, picking out individual rays that make graphics all the more mesmerizing. If Rob liked water graphics before, he's gonna love them now, with water so real you could reach in and drink it were it not made up of pixels and electricity. PSA, please don't drink your TV. PS5 system memory is 16GB of GDDR6 RAM, with a 448GB a second bandwidth, and the storage is a custom 825GB SSD, or solid state drive, with a 5.5GB a second raw read bandwidth. 
Essentially, it's very speedy at loading up your content. The SSD does away with all sorts of limitations that traditionally would hold developers back, meaning brand new opportunities for immersive gaming worlds that PS5 can load lightning fast. Both editions of PS5 come with the same 825GB SSD for storage, and with an expansion port allowing for users to expand this storage in future. The ability to use the expansion port will come in a future software update, along with a list of SSD storage compatible with PS5. I'm going to bring up cooling now because I just want to say there's a liquid metal thermal interface. Think Terminator 2, which I do all the time. Anyway, happening in your PS5, which coupled with this wonderfully enormous fan helps keep PS5 cool and quiet. There's also dust collectors that can be vacuum cleaned to remove dust buildup in your console to stop it overheating too. Which sucks, literally. You can maintain good ventilation otherwise by following these guidelines. Place a console at least 10cm away from a wall surface. Do not place on a rug or carpet with long fibres. Do not place in a narrow or cramped space. Do not cover with cloth. Do not allow dust to build upon the vents. Hoover time again, my friends. Another of PS5's most immersive features is Tempest 3D Audio Tech, a custom audio engine that, with compatible headsets, allows you to pinpoint the direction from which sounds are coming. So it's really going to feel like you're being chased by a horde of zombies, or a monster is breathing down the back of your neck. This is especially handy in Demon Souls when enemies like to sneak up on you from nowhere. As long as you're wearing headphones, 3D audio will work with all PS5 games, and can be tailored to suit personal tastes in your PS5 profile settings. And last but not least in this section, PS5 game discs will be Ultra HD Blu-ray discs, with a capacity of up to 100GB, meaning bigger game space for devs to dish out some unbelievable content. You can use the PS5 console with a disc drive to watch 4K Blu-ray movies as well. But what about the games, I hear you cry? Well, PS5 has the cool ability to use preferred install for whichever titles you want to play that take advantage of the feature, meaning you can pick which part of a game installs first. So if you're a multiplayer maverick or all about the solo superiority, you can get your favourite mode prioritised over the rest and get at it in the shortest amount of time possible. You can then uninstall modes you don't want on your system so your games aren't taking up unnecessary space too. Thanks to the way SSDs operate, downloading and applying software updates on PS5 should be quicker too, with more efficient management behind the scenes ensuring speed is at the heart of everything PS5. You'll also be able to free up storage using the PlayStation app if you run out of space when installing games too. Before you get into your games, you can also set preferences in the PS5 save data and game slash app settings menu, where options for inverted controls, subtitles, preferred difficulty level, default camera settings and more can be set at a system level and then are reflected in supported games. PS4 users will be familiar with the option to activate a console as your primary PS4, which enables anyone who uses your primary PS4 to use your games and applications, as well as enjoy the benefit of your PS Plus subscription. On PS5, you can enable console sharing and offline play in the settings menu. This is only possible on one PS5 console, though you can have both a primary PS4 and a PS5 set up for console sharing at the same time. If you're caught between PS5 and PS5 Digital Edition, then know that there is no performance difference between the two. Games don't run from discs, they're installed onto the SSD just the same as if that data were downloaded digitally from PlayStation Store. Physical and digital games are totally equal when it comes to harnessing the power of PS5's SSD. Also, PS5 games are not region locked. Hooray! As for actually playing these games, just as on PS4, you can enter rest mode or start of a media app and your game will be suspended, ready for you to resume exactly where you left off whenever you're ready. Fully powering off or starting a second PS5 game will automatically close your first game, however. Accessing your games can be done on any console as long as you log in, meaning your digital library is only a few clicks away whether you're at home, with friends, or anywhere else you mysteriously find a PS5 lurking. As for how trophies work on PS5, these all line up in chronological order in a dedicated trophy section, so you can admire your cabinet of accomplishments from your latest edition onwards. There's also a new dedicated feature that automatically records a 15 second video of the moments leading up to any trophies you earn alongside the usual screenshot, so you'll always have the perfect capture. You can adjust how long this video capture lasts in the settings menu. Trophies that pop whilst you're in a game now offer details without taking you to another screen, with a single press of the PS button when prompted opening a details tab in the corner that tells you exactly how you earned your prize. Also, it's worth mentioning you can see your total playtime of your PS4 and PS5 titles from the game section of your profile to see how truly dedicated you are to the gaming course. 25 hours on Fall Guys! And I still haven't won a crown. 
now for PS5's backwards compatibility, which is focused on making PS4 games available to play on the new console. More than 99% of PS4's 4,000-plus games are playable on PS5, and accessing that existing library of PS4 games is as simple as logging in and then either downloading digital PS4 games from PlayStation Store or your game library, or inserting a PS4 Blu-ray disc into your PS5, provided you're using the PS5 with a disc drive, of course. You can continue to purchase and download digital PS4 games from the PlayStation Store on both PS5 editions. Compatible PS4 games on PS5 may also benefit from Game Boost, with faster loading times, improved frame rates, higher resolutions, improved graphical fidelity, and increased performance. Certain PS4 titles offer free upgrades to their respective PS5 version too, which can be accessed and applied through the game's hub whilst on the PS5 console. Remember though, if this is a physical copy, you'll need the disc inserted every time you want to play. PS5 upgrades of PS4 games will show up separately in your library as they utilize different features, so keep an eye out for the console indicator badge whilst browsing to select the version you're after. While PS5 games can be installed on the console's SSD, PS4 games can be played from a compatible external USB drive for ease of access and to save space. You can even choose to enable a PS5 system preference which will directly install your PS4 content onto a connected USB drive too. It's recommended to use a USB 3.0 drive for this purpose, with a capacity anywhere between 250GB to 8TB. If you're already using an external drive as extended storage on your PS4, then you can plug it straight into your PS5, after safely disconnecting it through the menu of course, and play any games you have installed on there straight away, there's no need to format it. Alternatively, you can format a new drive by going to Settings, Storage, Extended Storage, and then selecting Format as Extended Storage. Easy as peripheral pie. PS5's backwards compatibility with PS4 titles also means any games you've redeemed as part of PlayStation Plus monthly games will also be accessible on PS5, located in a dedicated PS Plus section from where you can download your selected games. All of your compatible PS Plus titles will be available to you for as long as you're an active member. Of course, PS Plus members on PS5 will also be able to redeem and play the entire PS Plus collection in addition to the monthly releases. This collection is a PS5 Plus benefit that brings together 20 games that define the generation. So get a load of this big old roundup of some of the finest PS4 games out there. These generation-defining titles include Batman Arkham Knight, Battlefield 1, Bloodborne, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Chronicles Edition, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, God of War, Infamous Second Son, Monster Hunter World, Mortal Kombat 10, Persona 5, Ratchet and Clank, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, The Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, and Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. That really is one hell of a lineup. Going forward, PS5 titles will be regularly added into the monthly PlayStation Plus mix as well. First up to add to your PS5 collection is the wonderfully Moorish Bug Snacks, which can be downloaded to your PS5 at no extra cost for PS Plus members between the 12th of November 2020 and the 4th of January 2021. While Worms Rumble is also available until the 4th of January too. Oh, and PS Now also has its own dedicated space on PS5 which can be used for streaming or downloading supported games too. In regions where PS Now is available, simply scroll across to access it on your system, and if you're a subscriber, get into those lovely games. If you're playing a multiplayer PS4 game via backwards compatibility on your PS5, you'll be able to play with anyone else on either console. You'll also be able to voice chat over parties on either console, as well as through the PlayStation app on mobile. When you're in a game that supports cross-gen play on PS5, any game invites you want to send will reach both PS4 and PS5 players. However, it should be noted that if you're inviting PS4 players to a game with no PS4 version available, the invite won't show up as a notification at all. Now, let's take a look at PS5's updated social features. Gamebase is the biggest addition here, acting as a social hub from where you can see your friends list, messages, and any parties you're involved in. Parties have received a massive overhaul, and are a place for you and up to 99 of your friends, if you can collect that many, to hang out and have fun. Text chat and voice chat with up to 16 friends are both available across PS4, PS5 and the PlayStation app, so you can talk strategy and share game content in one dedicated space. If you're in a party, everything is streamlined and simple. Jumping into multiplayer matches automatically brings active party members along with you, without having to sort out in-game invites. Or you can screen share to give friends a real-time view of what you're doing as you all play. PS Plus members can even use SharePlay to hand over game control to a friend or to play local co-op games, even if the other player doesn't own the game. 
In other social features, integration is available with Spotify, Twitch, Twitter and YouTube, so you can link your account and get sharing. All of that is well and good of course, but my favourite new feature is one that steps away from the social side for a little bit. There's a new status called Busy. A peer offline is useful, especially if you don't want anyone to find out you're sneaking a quick go on Astro's playroom when you should be working, but Busy just feels more important, right? Leave me alone! I've got a tower knight to defeat and one more puzzle piece to find in Cooling Springs! Now for everything outside of your console, starting with the shining star of this show, the DualSense wireless controller. To connect, plug in your included USB cable to PS5 and the DualSense wireless controller, press the PS button and you're ready to go. This handheld delight is designed for tactile gaming immersion like nothing else, with adaptive triggers and haptic feedback which offers the potential for gameplay to become an immersive sensory experience. The haptic feedback works by utilising dual actuators that mimic sensations instead of simple rumbling, meaning PS5 games have a whole heap of new feelings right at your fingertips you won't have experienced in gaming before. PS4 games played on PS5 will feel as they did before, but newer titles will be able to take advantage of the full arsenal of pulses, vibrations, knocks, sizzles and shakes at their disposal, meaning the DualSense wireless controller is a must for PS5 titles. It also has optimised input latency and motion controls, because why not? Best of all, all of the buttons are remappable, and the intensity of the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers can be customised for player preference. The controller can be charged with the included USB cable whilst continuing play, or via the separately sold charging station, with charge lasting about as long as the DualShock 4. And it takes about 3 hours for a full charge. On the DualSense wireless controller itself, we have the D-pad, the four PlayStation shape base buttons, two bumper buttons, two adaptive triggers, the slightly larger touchpad, options button and PlayStation mark serving as the home button, all of which will be familiar to DualShock 4 owners already. There's also a headset jack, an integrated speaker serving up much clearer and defined sounds from the controller, and light bars to show PS5 status, with a player indicator light under the touchpad to tell you which player you are for local gameplay sessions. Up to four DualSense wireless controllers can be connected at a time. But wait, there's more! The DualSense wireless controller comes with a built-in microphone already decked out with echo cancellation, allowing for chatting with friends without the need for a headset and making it easy to use the dictation features to turn speech to text on screen. And to go with the mic, there's of course a dedicated mute button. One short press will mute or unmute your controller or headset mic, and a long press will mute or unmute all sound outputs, meaning you can silence your TV as well. And last but not least on the DualSense wireless controller, we have the Create button, opening up a whole world of creative possibilities in the process. The newly added Create button is a reworking of PS4's Share button. You can use it to record gameplay, take screenshots or start broadcasting, as well as adjust controls related to all three without leaving your game too. Set up your favourite shortcuts and do it all with a simple press or two of the button. Gameplay footage can be recorded at 1080p or 4K and up to 60 frames per second. By default, PS5 will automatically record the last 60 minutes of play, but you can adjust this to as little as 15 seconds, or start and stop your own recording manually from your current point in game. Screenshots can be saved as JPEG or PNG formats, with 1920x1080 or 3840x2160 that's 1080 and 4K resolutions available. HDR screenshots will be taken and viewed if you're connected to a HDR display, but will be converted to a standard JPEG when exported. You can't bring over your PS4 screenshots, but with images as lovely as these, you'll surely be taking plenty more on PS5. Everything you create and capture will be saved to the media gallery on the game's home screen, and from there you can view, share, copy to USB or playback USB media in one easy spot. You can also edit screenshots with stickers and text to be primed and ready for sharing. This is where those lovely parties come in, as you can send screenshots and up to three minutes of video to your group on PS5 or the PlayStation app, as well as places like Twitch, Twitter and YouTube. For those broadcasting from PS5, you can do so in 1080p or 4K, but be aware this might be reduced depending on your streaming platform. PS5 allows for HDMI-based capture as well. You'll just have to make sure HDCP is disabled in the settings menu. There's also share screen and share play options. Share screen is like a mini-scale broadcast between your pals on parties, with up to 16 members in a voice chat able to see your game screen in real time. PS Plus members can then use share play for another chat participant to play the shared screen game for up to an hour whilst the party is popping, watching and chatting along. And speaking of broadcasting, moving on from the DualSense wireless controller, we have the HD camera. This new camera features two sensitive, wide-angle lens, full HD cameras in one. 
This is designed to measure depth of field in an intuitive way, so it's great for cropping backgrounds from whoever might be on screen if you're using it for picture-in-picture -picture face cam or streaming. There's no microphone in this camera, but remember, there is one in the DualSense wireless controller. Next, we have the Media Remote, which is your go-to for that prime television experience when you're watching films and shows on PS5. Buttons on the remote include volume options, selection arrows, return options, fast forward, rewind, play, pause, and four dedicated streaming service buttons as well. Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube. The latter of which will be the most important for getting your PlayStation access fix, eh? The Media Remote has a mic that can be used in the on-screen keyboard and media apps that support voice dictation. The Media Remote runs on two AA batteries, which come included. It should also go without saying, you cannot play games with this. The Pulse 3D wireless headset is the PS5's official headset, taking design notes from the console, but you can still use it with the PS4 or even your PC with the included wireless adapter. The rechargeable battery will give you about 12 hours of playtime, and there's also a standard 3.5mm jack audio cable to connect it to just about everything else, too. These bad boys boast two noise-cancelling microphones, USB-C charging, and a host of controls to perfect your audio mix, like mute, master volume, mix controls, and mic monitoring. You can also use the gold wireless headset and platinum wireless headset on PS5 and enjoy 3D audio, as well as some PS4 headset models, depending on how they connect and if the manufacturer supports the compatibility. PlayStation VR games can be played on PS5 thanks to backwards compatibility too, and like other PS4 games may benefit from enhanced performance on the new console. It is worth noting though that the HD camera is not compatible with PSVR gameplay, and you'll need to use the PlayStation camera for PS4. Just order a free adapter using the serial number on your headset on the website in the description to connect it to PS5. It's recommended that a DualShock 4 is best used with PSVR games still, as well as for PS4 games that require a light bar. You can still use PlayStation Move controllers or the PSVR Aim controller in supported PS4 or PSVR games too. As for everything else, there's also the DualSense charging station you can use to simultaneously click in and charge up to two DualSense wireless controllers at the same time, charging as fast as if they were plugged directly into the console. This means you can free up USB ports. And if you're curious, existing specialty controllers that are designed for and licensed for the PS4 console, such as steering wheel controllers and arcade fight sticks, will work on PS5 if the PS5 or PS4 game supports it. You can also connect a keyboard and mouse via USB or Bluetooth. Once you have your console up and running, here is everything you need to know about the PS5 interface itself. PS5's lights aren't just stylish, they're also functional. Much in the same way as PS4, on turning on, your PS5 will light up blue, before settling onto white when the console is ready to use. Turning it off will then make it flash blue again. Rest mode will turn the light orange, and there are a custom range of options you can use to optimize PS5's functions whilst in standby mode. Charging connected devices and installing updates, for example, or opt for power saving selections instead. The first time you turn on your PS5, you'll need to update the system and DualSense wireless controller. This is easily done over an internet connection, but can also be taken care of with a USB drive formatted for FAT32 or XFAT2 if you're not online. First up, you can sign into your PS5 console using the PlayStation app without entering your password on screen. Handy for those of us constantly forgetting the damn thing. Once you're in, you can see the new Control Center, a one-stop shop for many of the functions you'll use most regularly on PS5. You get here by pressing the PS button on the DualSense wireless controller and access just about anything you'd need in a few quick clicks. The Control Center opens without leaving your game, so you can dip in and out as needed whilst playing. You'll notice activities as another new feature whilst the control center is up, which are display cards that feature in-game opportunities, like what quests you can focus on next or trophies you're close to bagging, as well as news, screen sharing, and game help. You can use some cards to jump into specific sections of gameplay and estimate the amount of time remaining in certain sections, and others can be put into picture-in-picture -in -picture mode or pinned to the side so you can keep them live whilst playing too. Game Help, exclusive for PS Plus members in supported games, is particularly interesting, as you can use it to get a helpful nudge in the right direction if you're struggling with a certain mission. I could not for the life of me figure out how to launch a trap in Bug Snacks, for example, and choosing to look at Game Help showed me a handy tip on what I was missing to move me along in my game without any pesky spoilers by searching online. 
The control center allows you to see who's online, the status of uploads and downloads, trophies, settings, the ability to manage controllers, look at your profile, and anything else you might need to do in a pinch, like use the switcher to jump between games and apps. Notifications have also had the customization treatment, meaning you can tailor what you want to see and when you want to see it. For example, if you're watching a movie and don't want friends online status to pop and disturb your 100th rewatch of Hot Rod, but do want to have that update when you're in a game, you can be that specific. Even write down to which friends you'd like notifications for or not. In the Games section of PS5's UI, each game comes with its own background display and snippet of music that appears when you scroll over them on the homepage, making for a more dynamic PlayStation experience. There's a game hub for each title you can scroll through for different information. In this way, the store is now integrated right into the system of PS5, making for a fluid, smooth experience when hunting for the latest title. Browsing is so much quicker. Going into your game library means you can easily see your own games as well as accessing PS Plus and PS Now games all in one place. Media apps have their own dedicated space in the same way as the game's home screen too. Explore will be on the home screen to access official updates and news for games you want to keep an eye on, and advertises live broadcasts, shared video, images, and trends in the community from followed games. As for how many people can be attached to a PS5, the system supports 16 users registered to one console, with up to four logging in at the same time. The media home screen on PS5 means you have a dedicated space for all of your recently used apps, with everything else neatly tucked away in the app library. New apps are located in the All Apps Hub, and the TV and Video Hub will recommend content across both your installed apps and ones you've yet to try. Netflix, Apple TV+, Disney+, YouTube, and Spotify are all available on PS5, depending on your region, but internet access and an account for PlayStation Network will be needed to access them. PS5 apps will support 4K and HDR where possible for that lovely home cinema experience. Best of all, if you're hunting for something specific on your PS5, you can use Universal Search to see what app the film or TV show you're after is located in rather than scrolling through each one individually. And of course, Spotify can blast your beats as background music whilst you're busy marvelling at all of your lovely PlayStation goodies within the sparkly UI. Or you can play from a USB drive if you're feeling old school as well. For physical media, the PS5 supports DVDs and Blu-ray discs, including UHD Blu-rays. Now, if you've heard me mention Remote Play but aren't sure what that means for PS5, then I'll explain here. Basically, you can access the console remotely and play your PS5 games using a PC or Mac, compatible mobile device, PS4, or another PS5 console. While this can be very useful in your house using your home network, slinging PS5 games to your PS4 in a different room for instance, it means you can play PS5 from anywhere, as long as you have a high-speed internet connection. Remote Play now supports up to four users per session too, which means you can play local multiplayer games with your friends online. Remote access to your PS5 has also been designed with the PlayStation app in mind. I mentioned earlier that you can log into the system without using a password by using the app instead, but you can also answer messages, interact with voice chat and party groups, use a PlayStation Store, see news and new features, and manage your downloads. The app requires iOS 12.2 or later, or Android 6.0 or later on your mobile, but allows both purchasing and downloading from afar. You can select what games you'd like to download to your PS5 console, as well as delete games or apps taking up space, making it a smart management tool both near and far from your console. And that, dear viewers, is everything you need to know about PS5 in the most ultimate of ultimate guides possible. Please, for the love of God, subscribe to PlayStation Access for more incredibly detailed information on your favorite console, and drop us a lovely like if this scratched your informational itch. If you somehow still have questions not in this guide, then drop them in the comments below and we will do our best to find you an answer. I've been Ash, this has been PlayStation Access, and thank you for watching. PlayStation.